Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. It is run by Kate, come and be her guest at the junction. And that's Uncle Joe, he's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. I wish we'd known you were coming. Somebody would have met you at the train. Someone did. I, uh, I think he's heading for a tip. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be enough of that. There's nothing worse than a pushy bellboy. <laughs> Mr. Andrews, would you like to sign the register? Oh, I love this place. Nothing ever changes. Little train, little dog, telephone isn't connected. Elevator doesn't work. Uh, pen doesn't work. <laughs> I love it. Hey, isn't that one of your fabulous apple pies I smell baking? That's three of them. I'm glad you reminded me. <laughs> oh, Billy Joe, honey, would you mind checking on my pies and see if they're done? Oh, sure, Mom. Oh, hi, Mr. Andrews. Well, welcome back. Beautiful and sweet as ever. Oh, thank you. Pies. Oh, hi. <laughs> Nothing has changed. Mom, can I go swimming if I'm... Oh, hello, Mr. Andrews. Welcome back. Thank you, Bobby Joe. Mom, I'll be back in time to help Billy Joe. I promise. Sensational as ever. Nothing has changed. Mom! <laughs> Something has changed. <laughs> yeah. Betty Joe, you remember Mr. Andrews? He was here a couple of years ago. Oh, sure. Welcome back, Mr. Andrews. Thank you. Last time I saw her, she was playing shortstop. <laughs> well, she can still handle pop flies, but those grounders are murdered. <laughs> what Doc Stewart say, honey? He says, I'm just fine, and I haven't gained too much weight, and I can have two pieces of apple pie. Two pieces? One for her and one for her doctor. But I'm eating for two now. No, you're not. I'll eat for myself. <laughs> See you later. Dr. Stewart, I'd like you to meet Mr. Andrews from Chicago. I'm pleased to meet you, sir. Same here. Forgive my stunned condition, but I just can't believe what I saw. Don't let that stun you. It even happens in Chicago. <laughs> you keep. You know what? I think that just room eight should be very comfortable. Will you follow me, Mr. Andrews? Oh, come on. I want to hear the whole story. Well, it is kind of romantic. You see, the girls were swimming in the water tower, and there was this low-flying crop duster. And he was watching them. And he flew too low. Well, when we got him out of the wreck and up to the hotel, that's when it all started. I think he's beautiful. Men aren't beautiful. Men are handsome. Well, you know what I mean. You think we'll get to keep him? <laughs> Was he seriously injured? Well, he made medical history. He was the only man known to take six months to recover from a skin nose. <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> At first, I thought he'd fallen for Billy Joe. Then I thought it was Bobby Joe. But I never in my wildest dreams thought it was that little grease monkey. Grease monkey? Uh-huh. 
Betty Jo used to help him work on his planes. As a matter of fact, the day he proposed, she was in greasy overalls and she... George, stop. Will you marry me? What? <laughs> I love you. Will you marry me? I'll say I will. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the wedding more than made up for it. It was beautiful. And she didn't look like a grease monkey that day. <laughs> I just couldn't believe my little baby was getting married. And now... <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sam, you Sam, 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 What's this all about? We're just making a name for Betty Jo and Steve's baby. All right, let's take another vote, and all those in favor of Joe Carson Elliott, raise their hand. <laughs> Wait a second, you voted for Sam Drucker, Elliott. They're both nice names. How do you like Newt Kylie Elliot? That's nice, too. Has it occurred to any of you men that the baby might have a name like Sally or Elizabeth? Oh, what kind of a name is that for a boy? Right, I never thought of that. Come on, fellas, let's caucus in the kitchen. I smell apple pie. Whoa. Whoa. That's for lunch, and we have a paying guest who's expecting some. Just my luck. Anybody I know? Yeah, Mr. Andrews from Chicago. Hey, that's a good name. Chicago? <laughs> no, Andrew, you nut. Yeah, there was a president named Andrew. Andrew Jackson. Well, this kid's gonna be president, and his name's gonna be Joe. <laughs> What's wrong with a president named Sam? I thought the political conventions were over. Oh, they're trying to decide on a name for the baby. It's between Joe, Sam, Newt, and Andrew. You better start kicking around some names like Jane and Prudence. <laughs> Vote for a president named Prudence. You're as bad as Kate. <laughs> well, goodbye, Kate. Bye, Doc. Thank you. Betty Joe's just fine. I'll be back and see her in a few days. Yes. Can I get a ride to Pixley, Mr. Gibbs? You sure can, Doc. Hey. What's your first name? It's Wendell. Forget it. <laughs> Actually, I'd like for folks to call me Cannonball. Well, that's what we call your train. I know. Well, maybe we could switch names. Nah. Who ever heard of a train named Wendell? <laughs> it's just a name I like. I like Howard Hughes, but nobody calls me that. <laughs> Anybody else for Pixley? No, I'll catch you on the way back to Hooterville, Wendell. Well, I guess that's a proud father, all right. Yes, there he is. Hi, darling. I'll fire up the boiler, Doc. Be ready in a minute. Bye, miss. Bye. Oh, uh, just a minute. It's Mrs. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's Steve's signal. He's going to land. Do you want to stay and talk to him? No, there really isn't much I can do about treating fathers. <laughs> I'd better get up to Grace Alney. She's expecting any time now. Oh, Doc? Yes? Do you have any idea whether mine will be a boy or a girl? What would you like it to be, Betty? Mm, healthy. Oh, but I'm sure Steve would like it to be a boy. Yeah. And I gotta admit, I kind of hope it's a boy, too. Why? Because Joe, Sam, Newt, and Andrew are terrible names for a girl. <laughs> <laughs> to an office job. 
Yes, ma'am. Floyd was a bachelor. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Are you a bachelor, Miss Yes, ma'am. <laughs> What's your first name? <laughs> it's Wendell. But I wish folks would call me Cannonball. I'll call you Cannonball. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye, Wendell. Goodbye. <laughs> I mean, Cannonball. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Think we left anybody out? From the size of that list, I doubt it. Hi. What's going on? Oh, only the biggest baby shower in the history of Hooterville. And that's what we want. Right, Bobby Joe? Right. Wow. We'll be up all night addressing those. <laughs> Ready, Joe? There's Papa. Hi, darling. Hi. Gosh, you got here fast. Well, that's because I got some big news. You ready? Okay. Guess who I just talked to on the phone? My Uncle George and Aunt Ruth in Baltimore. Well, you know my Uncle George. He's connected with the university there. And they've got one of the finest hospitals in the world. Well, let me put it this way. Guess where my wife's going to have our baby and who is going to be the attending physician? Why, Hooterville Hospital and Dr. Stewart. Wrong. Day after tomorrow, you're going to Baltimore. You're going to stay with my aunt and uncle. Then when your time comes, you're going into one of the finest hospitals in the world and you're going to be taken care of by one of the world's greatest gynecologists. <laughs> well, what's the matter? You all look like I just shot Smokey the Bear. <laughs> well, you're excited, aren't you, honey? Oh, oh, yes, Steve, of course. It, it's just that I'm a little surprised. I guess we all are. Well, all I want is the best for my wife. Well, of course, Steve. It, it's just, I guess, that it never occurred to us that you'd go outside the valley. You see, uh, Doc Stewart's delivered every baby in, in these parts for well, as long as we can remember. But he's not a specialist. Well, if he ain't, he's making a pretty good try at it. That's right. You know, Doc told me the other day that he's brought over 800 babies into the world. Yeah, and counting kittens and calves a heck of a lot more than that. <laughs> kittens and calves. Look, I don't understand you people. Well, sure, Doc's a nice guy. But if you can get the finest facilities and the greatest specialists, well, who'd be satisfied with a one-horse hospital and a country doctor? <laughs> I guess we would, Steve. Oh, come on, darling. Let's talk about this on the way home. I've got a million things I'm dying to ask you. Bye, everybody. See you later. Thanks for the pie, Mom. You're welcome, honey. Bye. How do you like that? Doc Stewart ain't good enough for it. Enough to make a fella lose his appetite. <laughs> I don't get it. They think I'm some kind of a monster. No, they don't. Not really. It was just a shock. To me, too. That's obvious. Oh, honey, please understand. I'm proud that you want me to have the best. And I love you for it, but... Well, I... I just feel kind of mixed up about it. You see, at a time like this, a girl wants to be with her family and her mother, and especially with her husband. Oh, Steve, I couldn't bear to be so far away from you. Well, I was planning to fly back for weekends, and of course I'd be there when you, for the uh, big event. You see, Steve, I hear from the city. To you, a big hospital and a specialist seem necessary. But having a baby isn't all that complicated, so they tell me. Well, maybe not 99 times out of 100, but there's always that 100th time. And I'll fight the whole Hooterville Valley, including you, before I'll take that chance. 
Oh, you don't have to fight me, darling. Nobody else matters. Just you and me and the baby. We'll do whatever you want. Well, we don't have to decide right this minute. Let's sleep on it. Oh, Steve, no, I must weigh a ton. Well, you know what they say, you lift the calf every day and pretty soon you can lift the cow. How? Elephant? Put me down. Would you settle for a large sack of sugar? That's better. <laughs> Where'd it go? Land. I'll tell you what I think. I think it's a direct slap in the face of Doc Stewart. And a slap in the face of the valley. Well, now, ladies, that wasn't the intention, I'm sure. Well, it may not be the intent, but that's the way it comes out. Going all the way to Baltimore to have a baby. The idea. Why, the finest babies in the world are born right here. I was born here. <laughs> Sam, did you say anything? Not yet. <laughs> well, don't you agree with us? Would you have a baby any place but Hooterville? Well, I think that comes under the heading of unlikely problems. I hope we can catch the morning mail. Hi, Mr. Drucker. Hello, Mrs. Miller. Mrs. Platt. How do you do? These are invitations for Betty Jo's shower. Oh, in that case, step over to the post office. Well, I thought we'd never finish. I know. The only thing is, I hope we didn't leave anybody out. I'll hand stamp them personally. All I know is that Doc Stewart and the Hooterville Hospital were good enough when my daughter Henrietta came into this world. But then, I guess that's not good enough for some people. I mean, it's not as though I couldn't have gone anywhere in the world. A Mayo Clinic, anywhere. Heaven knows we had the means. In fact, my Herbert tried his level best to get rid of me. Ah, I mean, he urged me to go. <laughs> Did I? No. No, I said. I have faith in Hooterville and our own Doc Stewart. <laughs> you know what she's driving at, don't you? Just try to ignore her. That's like ignoring Niagara Falls. <laughs> well, uh, you'll send these out for us then, right, Mr. Drucker? Just leave it to me. Okay, thanks. Uh, come on, Bobby Joe. Uh, Billy Joe, uh, did I understand you were having a shower for Betty Joe? Yes, we are. We'd like you to come. Well, that all depends. Uh, where is it being held? Well, at the Shady Rest, of course. My, how surprising. Why is that, Mrs. Plout? Why, for a baby who was being born in a swanky hospital in Baltimore. I thought the very least you would do is have the shower in Newport. That is, if any place is good enough. Mrs. Plout, you're talking about my sister and... And what? Yeah, we want to thank you very much for your suggestion. No, we... Yes, we do. You know, Selma, there's times when I think you wasted your money on that charm school. <laughs> well, it looks like everybody feels the same. As long as Betty Jo's going to snub Doc Stewart, they're going to snub her. That's right, Kate. Everybody that came in the store this morning said the same thing, so I just had to close up and come here for a talk. Let's see. What are we going to do, Mom? Honestly, this is getting completely out of control. Yeah, this is trouble. Calls for a delicate hand. But I'll come up with something. <laughs> well, I got to recharge the old brain cells. <laughs> what do you think, Pete? Well, we certainly don't want Steve and Betty Joe to be unpopular in the valley. Right, so we got to bring them to their senses. Here comes Betty Joe now. Well, good. You talk to her, Kate. Yeah, straighten her out. All right, all right. Now, why don't you all quietly disappear, huh? Come on, Joe. <laughs> about you. Good. You're alone. I kind of need to talk to you. What's the problem? The problem is Steve and the baby. Hmm. Oh, Mom, you know how I feel about Doc Stewart and you and Hooterville. It would never enter my mind to have the baby anyplace else. I understand, dear. And yet, Steve is doing what he thinks is best. So, uh, you're faced with, um, 
going along with Steve or pleasing everybody else, right? That's about it. What would you do, Mom? Oh, I know exactly what I'd do. I wouldn't hesitate a minute. I'd stick with my husband. Well, it's as much his baby as it is yours, and he's, he's just trying to do what's best for both of you. That's what you really think? Don't you? Oh, sure. It's just that going clear to Baltimore and having everybody down on us. Well, I'm sorry. You asked me, I told you. I know. I guess I was hoping you might say, Betty Jo, this is your baby and you have it wherever you like. I might have known you'd be sensible about it. Well, that's the way they're making mothers today. And remember, stick with your husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. I'm sorry, Joe, but that's the way I feel. Well, let's look at the practical aspect. Practical aspect? Yeah. How many votes will a kid get being born in a hospital in Baltimore? But a humble cottage in Hooterville. Ah, uh -huh. that's the stuff landslides are made of. <laughs> landslides? Yeah. When he's elected president of the United States. <laughs> oh, Ben. Well, look, Joe, I'll level with you. There's a fair chance that he might not be president. And that humble little cottage in Hooterville is what I'm worried about. I mean, suppose it happens in the middle of the night and we can't get a hold of the doctor in time. I got that all solved. I'll just reactivate the system I inaugurated when Elsie Trotter had her baby. So? Oh. Yeah. It was world famous. Down here, anyway. <laughs> Here's how it works. Betty Jo feels the time is near. She nudges you. You jump out of bed. String attached to your toe activates a cowbell. Over at the shady rest, I hear the cowbell. Leap out of bed. Run outside, start a fire. You're cold. No, it's a signal fire. <laughs> ben Miller sees the fire, fired his shotgun twice, which wakes Newt Kiley, who clangs a fire alarm, which wakes Sam Drucker, who alerts Wendell Gibbs aboard the cannonball. He hightailed it for the doctor. See how it works? Yeah. Uh, didn't I hear that when you tried that little scheme, the doctor never got there? Yeah. Well, there was that one little flaw. <laughs> I think we'll stick with Baltimore. <laughs> at the Mercer Flats tonight. In this weather? It's Grace Olney's time, and I've got to get there fast. Well, it could be a little dangerous. It would be very dangerous for Grace if she has to have her baby alone. I'll get my picture. Good man, that. He's not the only one. Well, Connie, don't worry. You'll be in very good hands in Baltimore. Oh, I know, Doc, but still... He's only thinking of Ready, you. Doc? Right. Bye, darling. Oh, be careful, sweetheart. You too. No ice hockey or pogo. <laughs> Come on, darling. Thanks, Betty Jo. and we couldn't decide who, so we all came over. <laughs> oh, hi, darling. What time is it? Oh, what happened? Well, it's 8 o'clock, and Grace only had a fine baby girl. Oh. <laughs> well, where's Doc Stewart? Oh, he figured Grace might be a little frightened, so he thought he'd stick around for a little while. He's uh, quite a guy. Yes, we know. You know, uh, <clears throat> about Baltimore. Yes? 
Well, I was just thinking, if we've got a man like Doc Stewart around and all this kind of help, well, why go there? There's no reason at all. Right. So, uh, uh, I'll just, uh, take this in the other room and unpack it. <laughs> That's your daddy. You'll get used to him. <laughs> Now stay tuned for Green Acres, next on Nick at Night's TV Land. Petticoat Junction. Junction. 